All right, welcome back. So let's say we're going to take a look at multiplying two matrices together. The rules governing how that works and how we can actually go about getting an answer for that. So you can multiply two matrices A and B if and only if the number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B. Okay, so again, the first matrix, column of the first matrix has to match the rows of the second matrix. Because if I do A times B versus B times A, those are two different answers. Uh, sometimes you might be able to do A times B, but you can't do B times A. So you have to be very careful about the order you're doing this in. So you're always going to want to identify the size of the matrix first to determine if you actually can multiply them. Because otherwise you're going to waste time doing that. So if we look at these two matrices, we don't really know what's inside there. We just want to determine if this product is defined or not. So we look at, well, it's a 3 by 4 for matrix A, 4 by 2 for matrix B. Looking at these two numbers right here that I just circled because it's rows by columns. So again, column of the first, row of the second have to match. And then the resulting matrix, which let's say A times B gives us C, C is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix. Because whatever the outside to so the row of the first and column of the second, that's going to be the resulting size of our new matrix there. So this would be able to work. Or something like this one right here, we've got a 5 by 3 and then a 5 by 4. So that would not work, not the same, so this would be an undefined uh, matrix product. The two mill numbers have to match up. Now if they do match up, the way it's going to work is you're going to multiply the element in the corresponding row to its corresponding column, each of those individual pieces, and they're going to add up together. So, for example, if I have this 2 by 2 matrix multiplied with another 2 by 2 matrix, uh, you're going to notice the first row, AB, multiplies with the first column, EG, and that's how we get AE plus BG. A and E are in the first spots, B and G in the second spots, they multiply together, and the results add. And then you'll notice it's AB within F and H for that second column spot, and then we drop down to the second row with each of those individual columns. All right, so we're going to take a look at how this works in the next couple things right here. So we have this first one. So we've got here two rows and three columns. This has got three rows and two columns. These two numbers are the same, so it will work, and it's going to create a two-by-two two matrix. So we go ahead and multiply each element in the first row times each element in the first column. So 0 and negative 3 would match together. 2 and negative 6 would match, and then negative 3 and positive 3 would match. That would be our first row, first column. Um, in the interest of space, I'm going to kind of run out of space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of erase this right here. I'm going to kind of do the work over here. So we have our first, so we got row 1, column 1 this is going to give us 0 times negative 3, 2 times negative 6, negative 3 times 3. So that would be 0 minus 12 minus 9, which is negative 21. And then we would have first row, second column. So then we would have 0 times negative 7, 2 times 4, and negative 3 times 5. Again, noticing each corresponding spot, 0 comes first, so is negative 7. They multiply together. 2 is second, 4 is second. They multiply together. Negative 3 is third, 5 is also third, so they multiply together. So it gives us 0 plus 8 minus 15, which is negative 7. And since we're done now with the columns, we now move on to the next row. So the second row, first column, so we would have 11 times negative 3, 5 times negative 6, negative 1 times positive 3, we get negative 33 minus 30, minus 3, which is a negative 66. And then finally, kind of ran out of space down here, but I'll do it here. So we got the second row and second column. So that's going to be our 11 times negative 7, our 5 times 4, and our negative 1 times 5, giving us negative 77, positive 20, and negative 5. That would give us our negative 62. So we can see our final answer is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. Negative 21 is the first row, first column. Negative 7 is the first row, second column. Negative 66 is our second row, first column. And then negative 62 is our second row, second column.
And that's our resulting final answer. All right, so there's a lot of work that's going on there. You just gonna have to make sure you're matching up the rows with the columns to create your final product. So if we take this one right here, so we can recognize this is a two row, one column matrix with a two row, two column matrix. Those two min numbers don't match up. So this would be an undefined final matrix. All right. Um, so we got one more, uh, just to kind of show you like a little bit bigger, kind of like how where the extreme end of this could get. Um, but again, you always want to make sure you're matching up your column of the first to the row of the second to make sure you have the proper, can this actually work, yes or no. All right, so this is our last one's going to be a little bit bigger, just so you can kind of see like where each of the pieces are going to come from here. So recognize the first matrix has got three rows and two columns. Second matrix has two rows and four columns. Those two matches, and it's going to create a three by four matrix. So we have row one, column one, would be one times zero, and then negative two times two, which is going to be a negative four. Again, one and negative two is in the first row, zero, two is in the first column. We then go to our second column there, we're still with that first row. So it'll be one times negative one and negative two times zero, which will give us negative one. And then our first row now goes to the third column. So it'll be one times negative four and negative two times negative two, which would be zero. And then we have our first row going now to the fourth column, our last column here with that first row getting one times negative three and negative two times one, giving us a negative five. So for our final answer here, we would have in the first row, negative four, negative one, zero, and negative five. So that's completed the first row's multiplication with each of the four columns. We now go on to the second row. So row two with column one would be three times zero plus negative one times two, which is negative two. The second row with the second column now would be three times negative one, and then negative one times zero, which would be negative three. Our third, sorry, the third column with that second row would be three times negative one, sorry, negative four, and then negative one times negative two, which would be a negative 10. And then the final column, column four with row two, would be negative, sorry, positive three times negative three, and negative one times positive one, giving us a negative 10. So this would be a negative two, negative three, negative 10, negative 10. And then following now the third row with each of the columns, so row three with column one, we'd have five times zero plus two times two, which is four. Row three with column two would be five times negative one plus two times zero, which would be negative five. Row three with column three would be five times negative four and then two times negative two, which is negative 24. And then finally the third row with the fourth column would be five times negative three and then two times one, which is negative 13. So we'd have four, negative five, negative 24, and negative 13. So it's, again, it can get a little bit complicated here with the multiplication of matrices. Uh, you will see, again, as I alluded to in the previous video, uh, if you take a look at the calculator use video, I'll show you how to enter the matrix into the calculator, and they can do this multiplication for you, which is useful if you're allowed the use of a calculator for these kind of questions. Uh, it just kind of depends on the scenario you're currently operating in. All right, so those are the major operations with matrices in terms of your basic addition, subtraction, multiplication. There really is no division. We'll get into what that kind of actually looks like um, as an alternative in a little bit. Uh, well, now the next two videos are going to talk about how to use these matrices to solve an equation. So I'll see you next time.